Today's episode of The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by bit-pay.com and Mt. Gox, mtgox.com and tradehill.com and usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOTCOIN. Hello and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is episode 34 and uh, what a week it has been. Today joining me is Adrian Jeffries who you probably recognize the name, maybe not the face, but Adrian Jeffries is a reporter for the New York Observer and specifically their Beta Beat blog, which uh, is a daily blog about uh, technology and specifically Silicon Alley, which is New York City. <laughs> right. Welcome Adrian. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Thanks for having me. We're fans of you. We, <laughs> we've never met before today, but we talk all the time because uh, we're always in the Bitcoin realm. Tell me though, um, the reason I initially contacted you and I wanted to ask you um, to join us is because I wanted to find out what it was like as a journalist to be assigned a story about Bitcoin. But you corrected me and said that you weren't assigned the story. So tell us how right. that happened. Right, so um, it's actually hard to trace where exactly I heard about Bitcoin the first time. It was around, you know, it was the, um, I subscribed to this tech newsletter called Launch, which is done by Jason Calacanis in oh. Silicon Valley. And uh, they did a big story about Bitcoin um, that was really sensational. And it was like, Bitcoin, the most, most dangerous person-to-person -person project that Ever. could destroy the world. <laughs> and so, of course, I had to read that. And then I, you know, read about it. And then, like everybody else, it's such a fantastic, like, weird, cool, sticky phenomenon that I just couldn't stop reading about it. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, some, some other you know, just sources that I talked to on a regular basis were asking me about it, sort of like, what do you know about this? And so I got the feeling that there was some interest in it and I should write about it. Mm -hmm. So I pitched it and uh, we try to do, I pitched it for the paper. Um, so I do most of my writing at Beta Beat, which is a blog about the New York tech scene and about uh, news of interest to the New York tech scene. Mm -hmm. So um, this, and but then I also do some tech stories for the weekly paper, uh, the weekly edition of the New York Observer. Um, so I pitched this story for the paper because I thought it was interesting, you know, because Wall Street obviously <laughs> is of interest to everyone who lives in New York. And uh, this had a, you know, this is like the potential, it was like, is Wall Street finally going to be disrupted by the internet? Like the way so <laughs> many other industries have. The record industry. And the yeah, film, yeah, exactly. The record, the newspaper industry. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So the one you're in. <laughs> totally. So this was the original idea of the story. And then it was just like, it was so early that it ended up being more of a Bitcoin explainer and like this is happening. And then um, there still hasn't been that much mainstream reporting on it, right. um, although there's been a lot. And I feel like it's still a, a ripe subject. And I pitched mm -hmm. another Bitcoin story, which ran today, which was about the next phase of the Bitcoin market, which is this more sophisticated kind of uh, derivatives trading, which mm -hmm. is a big step for Bitcoin because it frees up liquidity in the market and makes it potentially um, make more sense for vendors to actually use it mm -hmm. um, because they can kind of adjust for the volatility of the currency. Um, and I was surprised that they said yes because I thought they would say, no, that's too geeky. We can't run two geeky stories about this geeky thing you like, the one from so close in a row. The one about derivatives, the current one. Yeah, the but one this today. this is the second one. You, oh, you mean you pitched this with me because you've been writing yeah, stories this every was day. In, right, so I've been blogging about it constantly because oh, I, okay. I just you know, have it in my news feed and like, there's so much drama all the right, time that right. you know, it's always a great story. It's a soap opera. So I've had all the blog posts, but yeah, this is the second big oh, feature, second big feature with, that I did version. a significant amount of reporting on. So right. This appeared in the print version. This was in the paper, yeah. Let me bring up my laptop and show. I should have brought a copy of the paper. Oh, well, we can see it here. Oh. <laughs> there it is, full screen. So yeah, that, this is Beta Beat, as you can see uh, from the Observer. And um, you've got a lot of things on today's headline. Uh, Pony Up haters, how 4chan gave birth to bronies? Yeah, we've got a couple of funny <laughs> features today. That story is about uh, this group of 4chaners who are big fans of the show My Little Pony. It's kind of a fun read. 
Um, and uh, the other big story we have today is about this diet craze that is become popular among entrepreneurs in New York. That's in the, the iHack, the Body Electric. Right. The Four Hour Body by right. Timothy Ferris. That's also a really fun read. There's fun stories on there. Mine is like actually probably the densest. The most serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so those, you, you didn't write all those. You, you wrote the Bitcoin. No. Yeah. You can't write everything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the, you see that? Uh, that's the uh, rough trades, digital derivatives hit the Bitcoin market as Wall Street bankers take interest. Right. So <clears throat> what's been happening in the Bitcoin world? Obviously, you know, the, the big news, um, mybitcoin.com obviously is um, rocking the world. Of Bitcoin and um, the the third largest exchange accidentally erasing their entire wallet. Right. It's crazy. It's all about security. And you know what I've been saying is that, and it's and it's affecting the price. Obviously, it's like going nuts right now. Mm -hmm. um, good time to buy. Maybe if you th if you still have faith in Bitcoin, it's a good time to buy. <laughs> a lot of people are losing faith apparently because because of that. Uh, especially people who don't really understand. It's <clears throat> they're having trouble separating. The idea of the uh, you know security issues of where they're storing their Bitcoin versus Bitcoin itself. The currency itself hasn't been affected, but the uh, you know the, the banks or the wallets or whatever these right. uh, exchange sites and things human, being hacked. Human error. Human yeah and, and human, human error. Human malice. Yeah and human malice exactly. Possibly. So that's why like what I say is the three biggest things uh, problems Bitcoin faces in my opinion are number one security, number two is um what's number two security number two is um i forget number three is currency uh currency risk um i have to come back government to that. intervention no i don't think i don't oh not yet no what is the second thing i always say <laughs> i'm like drawing a blank <laughs> uh anyway whatever uh <laughs> wait 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 stop 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 uh Shoot. Anyway, I'll come back to me. Um, so, security is the first concern, and that is um, because, like you said, malice, mistakes. Even technologists have screwed up and accidentally deleted their wallets. So, right. um, there really isn't an excellent way to recommend, especially for the for lay people who are not geeks. Right. They're the ones who are at risk because they just don't know how to manage it. And it's not, I mean, we, you know, you can create a, a how-to tutorial, uh, but it's it's a very big project. And if you mess one thing up, even the technologists mess one thing up and they right. lose their wallet. So it's dangerous in that sense right now. The way I look at it is just like the wild, wild west. We've discovered gold. There was a gold rush. Now right. we're seeing, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever uh, stagecoach heists and bank robberies and things like that. Right. We're getting used to it. Early adopters are like the early pioneers. A lot of them fell like on their the other way. That's good. That's good. It's true, right? So um, either brave or foolish. Exactly. Yeah. So security. Oh, I know the second one. Finally, it came to me. The first one is security. The second one is liquidity. The ability to buy and right. sell. Right, and it. this is where derivatives come. Exactly. Yeah. So security, liquidity, and um, the currency risk, which means that merchants, if the, you know, if Mezzi Grill needs eight ninety five for that, uh, you know, whatever right. pita, then they they need eight ninety five. They they don't want it to drop ten percent and have it be seven ninety five right. by the next day. It won't work in retail. And this is also where derivatives come in because you can imagine if the exchanges add some mechanism for negotiating, like a futures contract, where you can talk, you can say, you know, I'll buy. X of the supply using bitcoins and lock in today's price of bitcoins. Mm -hmm. So but you've been talking about trade in the future. So you've been talking to these people today, recently in the last days. What is the latest news on that front? You know more than I do about this because you've been in touch about with these derivatives. People. Yeah, I mean the, the the new exchanges that are that are already mm -hmm. up or that are coming soon that are in testing or whatever that are going to offer these derivatives. Right. I mean, what's the status of it? Um, well, I should make a caveat first and say that while I was researching the story there's just so much going on that I can't say with authority that you know these are the only exchanges doing it and, the, mm -hmm. and this is the only because it's possible that I just didn't find it because there's so much going on mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but as far as I know there are no ex exchanges that formally offer margin trading or short selling or some of these other derivative products they're mostly sticking to uh, buying and selling mm -hmm. and like there's some advanced selling 
tools, like being able to put in a, an order for a dark pool, being able to put in a like kill fill order where, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the order tests for s buying bitcoins at some price, and if it finds bitcoins at that price, it fills the order, and if it doesn't, it terminates it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there that is available, um, but I think most of the major exchanges are saying that they're going to offer. They're going to. Yeah. Some like you usually options and uh, and uh, margin mm -hmm. trading, which is where the exchange will basically like spot you uh, some bitcoins so that you can trade with so that smaller traders can execute trades with much larger entities. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think the exchange that's farthest along in this is Ruxum mm -hmm. um, because they had a. Or, or sorry, uh, is Camp BX, which is say, the one that's based in Atlanta, the one that's based mm -hmm. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so they're taking a real chance by, you know, I, I spoke to the founder and he said they had talked to, like, the state of Georgia and to see how they could be in compliant with U.S. laws mm -hmm. when the dollar is involved. Mm -hmm. um, and he's confident that they can navigate within... Yeah, that's key or... Um, I forgot his name, but yeah, Camp yeah. BX. He was a guest on our show the other day. Oh, really? Yeah, I know okay. it's hard to watch everything. So maybe I'm repeating what he said. <laughs> but no, no, you're. It's um, he. Th that's exactly what he said. Basically, he said options are coming soon, uh, starting right. with margins. And right. the example for the for people who don't know what that means, basically, his simple analogy was: if you have a hundred U.S. dollars in your account, um, and then you qualify for this then you, they would actually spot you another hundred, so you'd actually be able to buy $200 worth right. of coins, even though you only have $100 to start with. Right. So, um, that, but that's not available yet, but coming soon. Right. right. And mm -hmm. he was saying for, for that, he was expecting, and he was expecting to offer margin trading and short selling within <coughs> four to eight weeks, depending on how long it takes them to build up enough deposits that they have enough liquidity to uh, spot people money. Right. Um, so they might be the first to market with a formal exchange with derivatives. Of course, there are people trading derivatives person to person right. on some of the over-the-counter sites and in IRC. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a, a site that I found called BitOption, which was live for a little while, and they offered a couple features. I think they had short selling available, but then mm -hmm. they took it down um, mm -hmm. and have made an announcement that they're working on you know, for some reason, they had to take it down. They had some technical issues, some and now they're, they're like working feverishly to get it back up. So they could be first. Interesting. So you mentioned Ruxum, and I know that's uh, is that in alpha, beta, invite only, I or what's the status? I think it's still in invite only. Invite only. I think I have an invite, but I haven't had time to look at it. But I will. Yeah. So have you? You should. Have I have used you it? Have you, yeah. I've checked it out. I I have an invite. Um, it, if you have an invite that's good because I think they're extending some lifetime discount to beta users and oh, actually cool. right now there's no fees I think still. You can use a um, lifetime discount. <laughs> yeah. I haven't bought Bitcoin on an exchange. I bought some Bitcoin at Mezagril which have since yes. disappeared. Yes. Um, but uh, I'm, I might try it out. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. no, no plans to make Bitcoin investment right now but it's mm -hmm. a possibility. Yeah. So yeah, so have you have you talked with Ruxum about what types of options they're going to offer? I have, yeah, and they've said um, somewhere on their website they say they're going to offer options. Um, when I spoke to the founder, he said m much the same thing. They're looking for more liquidity in the market. They think the Bitcoin economy needs to get bigger as a whole mm -hmm. um, before they start offer derivatives trading. And he actually had sort of an opposite view where he thought that, that more people need needed to start using Bitcoin before the financial like sector of Bitcoin, you know, evolves further. Mm. Um, Using so. it in what sense? I mean, just for normal purchases or right. just investments or both? Right, just normal oh, purchases. Oh, normal purchases. People using it as a currency and mm -hmm. and getting faith in it as a mm. currency yeah. before there's more um, trading of it. Yeah, I remember Camp BX saying that they're they're not going to allow everyone to to uh, do these this margin trading. It's going to be based on you have to have a minimum balance and a minimum, right. some experience or like track record. They're not going to just let a novice come in there and do it because right. they'll lose their shirt. <laughs> right. Somebody has to sort of prove that they have a little bit of experience and they know what they're doing. Right. Because right? it seems it seems dangerous, you know, because if you... Yeah. If Bitcoin falls like it has this week, you know, all it takes is uh, some bad press, <laughs> as we know. 
and then all the the people that are a little squeamish just go run you know? right and that affects the price but um in the end it seems to always kind of come back up it's we'll see <laughs> in the right. future the future is un you know, unpredictable but um so what else is going on like how, how have you talked to the people at, at the Polish exchange the, about I have not gotten in touch with them okay. uh, they they said something publicly and I read mm -hmm. the discussion on Hacker News I don't know if mm -hmm. you're familiar with this forum yeah. yeah so that's where I got all my information about them I haven't reached out to them I, th yeah. I think uh, my understanding is that the owner of the exchange had it hosted uh, with Amazon's cloud hosting service mm -hmm. and then he was switching servers and apparently Amazon, when you turn off your machine, will delete everything yeah, as like an list. incentive to keep your servers running all the time. And so <sighs> this guy, I guess, didn't know this didn't or know just that. screwed up and uh, 17,000 Bitcoins are now permanently gone from the Bitcoin ecosystem, yeah. is my understanding. Yeah, that's what I read too. And then I, I think he was trying to sell the domain for the, for, for the amount of his loss. Yeah. And some people were saying that would be to compensate people for their deposits. Yeah. So it's 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 just so freaky. Different things about it that well that like Ed and I's loss with my Bitcoin was uh, greater than that. Greater than the th the third right. largest exchange is just blows my mind. And the the fact that somebody who's technical enough to run an exchange, the third largest exchange can make an can, error like yeah. that. I mean, it's just human error. Right. And, and these are very, very technical people. I mean, obviously in hindsight, it's so easy to criticize. Right. But the, the most technical people can um, just make a, a, a mistake or misjudgment. Usually, they don't. it's not really making the, a mistake, but it's a misunderstanding about how something works. Like the guy that lost, I forgot what it was, you know, $400,000 worth of Bitcoin at one point, he um, had followed all these steps. And his mistake was he misunderstood the the way the client worked and that you have to have the client closed before you copy the wallet file in and out. A lot of people don't know that. And as I understand it, this was the story that he actually had it open and he copied it out and then somehow closed right. it and then the backup, then he deleted it. He did a secure you know, wipe of his hard drive right. to secure it. And then the backup didn't work after he had put right. the coin in it. So, you know, not the proper, uh, well, misunderstanding of how the software worked and not the proper testing, obviously. You test it with a millionth of a, of a cent a few times right. in and out, so you know what, for sure what's happening before you put all your money on it, of course. And then also splitting it into multiple, not just one wallet, but several, you know, four or five different wallets. Mm -hmm. But this, these are things that, you know, super technical people are making mistakes and losing right. their Bitcoin. So the average Fred and Marge in Toledo, who can barely work a mouse, I mean, is there any hope for them at this point? You know, that's the right. question. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's the thing about Bitcoin is there's no barrier to entry. Yeah. And that was something that I said in my story today was that it's attracting a lot of people who know just enough to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, like me, I thought I knew enough to go ahead and buy some Bitcoin and then I ended up losing money for myself and the couple of people I had taken orders for. Mm -hmm. So um, it's like, and, and that's true on the technical side, I think, and also mm -hmm. true on the investor side. Because a lot of the people I quoted in my story were like, you know, people working toward a PhD in finance or someone who had worked on Wall Street in like a, you know, a s foot soldier kind of position mm -hmm. um, or people who worked like tangent to the finance industry. And it was like, yeah, you know, I'll, you're pretty familiar with it, but, you know, with Wall Street, it's so professionalized and people have, you know, high, higher levels of knowledge and more experience and mm -hmm. also, you know, more people because you're working with firms and they're checking each other and then mm -hmm. so you're kind of doing yeah. it solo it's like it's really like being a pioneer an early adopter you're you're just you're absolutely um like a scout going ahead of everybody else and you're on your own right. in, in a lot of and ways. everybody else is going to learn from your mistakes yeah, exactly in a big way our uh <laughs> you know the i guess that's what it is with anything brand new and um so you're, you're, I mean, it's, it's considered a feature, the fact that it's, you know, libertarian, it's the people's money, right. and it, you're, it's all yours and under your control. But there's a responsibility, obviously, um, that all falls on your sh shoulders. So, you know, if you're a high-tech uh, geek and you know the ins and outs of it, um, you know, even then you can make mistakes. Mostly those people are secure. 
but even then you can make mistakes. So, you know, yeah, that's my concern is obviously it's not going to get adopted widely until we solve the number one problem, security. You know, that, that has to be solved. And uh, security, like you say, from, from yourself, <laughs> security from yourself making a mistake techno right. technically, and security from the bad guys who are trying to steal it, and security from um, just, uh, uh, you know, loss, theft, mistakes, anything. Right. So I think this is actually going to be the next evolution of the Bitcoin finance industry is people who will, um, like a ratings agency kind of, mm -hmm. some, something to fulfill that role. Yeah. Um, so you can know who to trust and who not to trust. And then places like Camp BX where they're prioritizing being above board and being accountable mm -hmm. and having mm -hmm. an, you know, they have like a picture of their office on their website. Like we have an address. You can come find us if you need to. We're going to go visit and see if it's real. But the, yeah. actually they're going to be here though. They're right. They be. just took it from Google Images. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Just a random <laughs> building from Dubai. And so, no, 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 no. No, they've been on the show. They're actually going to be here, which is actually a good time to plug. Um, is it three weeks from today? It's, it's um, the Bitcoin... It's two weeks from today. What am I saying? <laughs> two weeks from today. It's the Bitcoin, the first uh, Bitcoin conference and World Expo, which is going to be right here in New York City. We're sponsoring it here, Only One mm -hmm. TV and the Bitcoin Show. And uh, it's going to be August 19th through 21st. So there's going to be like a little pre-conference festivities on Thursday the 18th if you come in early. And then it's um, like Friday the 19th, all day Saturday, we're gonna have some amazing keynote speakers in there. We're actually confirming a lot of them today. Mm -hmm. Gavin Andresen, of course, is gonna be here. And there are three or four other really big names that I'll be updating on, the, on a little bit later today. But if you go to bitcoinconference.com, if you got that up there, bitcoinconference.com. I think it has to be all lowercase, there's some glitch there. But anyway, bitcoinconference.com, all lowercase, you'll see all about the conference and the program and the speakers and um, you can register. It's two Bitcoins right now for admission, which is like nothing, like cheaper than a movie in Manhattan. Oh, right? well, you should register today. Register today, yeah, you have to. And you gotta book your flights today too because you know it's two weeks out. And, uh, but then there are still tables available. There are vendor tables now. Um, we're actually gonna be moving the venue to a larger place, so that'll be updated by probably by the time you're seeing this. So go to bitcoinconference.com and register today. You can pay by Bitcoin. If you don't have Bitcoin, uh, just call us and we, we can make special arrangements to uh, register you and accept cash at the door and so on. So um, anyway, so that's cool. That, and that is going to be like uh, people, by the way, people are for sure flying here from China, Africa, Central South America, the Amazing. West Coast, Australia, London, everywhere. Yeah, just looking at my story today and seeing where the traffic for, was coming from. Isn't it, it amazing? It was so much more international than yeah. anything we usually do. It really makes it, it drives it home that, you know, how we're, we're always clear that we're not a local show or a national show. We're, not, we're, not, we're a global network because mm -hmm. um, the internet just is and, and Bitcoin is the global currency. It's just, you know, there are statistics, but, you know, a, a minority a pretty small minority in the big picture of things of users are in the United States. It's totally global. So eventually I think people will start thinking of things in terms of the price of Bitcoin if they're really into it, you know? Yeah. It, and, the price, and the price kind of stabilizes or whatever. Right. <laughs> so more. Some people are already thinking in Bitcoin terms like, well, that would be, you know, two Bitcoin or something. They know right away, you know. Yeah, of everyone has an app on their phone. Yeah, as long as <laughs> mine is broken now, but oh, <laughs> as long as it's not changing every hour, that's the craziness. But um, from bad press, but so yeah, I think you're right. This is the next era. I mean, the early early one was uh, mining. Oh wow, how cool is this? Mm -hmm. The next one is wow, this is the future. Let's invest in it, and that still exists. But um, now it's like oh wow, we hit our first big road pothole in the road and that is security. This is not gonna work until security is solved. But uh, I know for sure there are a lot of projects that are addressing mm -hmm. this, that are in, in development, that are yeah, coming I've real soon. Yeah, I've heard of several mm -hmm. off the record. Yeah, I mean, there's some that are very public and they're open source, which is a beautiful thing. Um, all, I'm all about security and open source security because then everybody, all I, Bitcoin itself is open source, and so there's, there's no security better than open source in my opinion. I mean, Linux itself and, you know, the most secure operating system is the most secure software in the world is open source because all eyes can review it. Everybody can see it. So these new open source, super, super clever, sophisticated security mechanisms that are under development now, they'll be out within, you know, I'm, I'm predicting within months, really. Um, and when that happens, 
I think confidence will be restored because people will see that, okay, wow, this is cool. I don't have to trust anybody. I, I'm actually, you know, I actually control my own Bitcoins and a secured uh, encrypted copy is mm -hmm. backed up on, on the server of my choice and in multiple servers and things like that. So, mm -hmm. so even if Amazon S3 goes down or whatever, you know, you'll still have access to it. You know, so that's, that's absolutely essential. So, um, what, it, how have your, how have the, the, um, the views been like, how, how is what's the reaction to these stories? Because I noticed like on the blog, you're like blogging about Bitcoin every day. You're just like Ms. Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> so much news. I think, um, my editor made a joke to me about it, about how much I was blogging about Bitcoin. So, um, Bitcoin they might be getting Bitcoin saturation on the <laughs> editor editorial side, but, uh, people read it. It's, um, the Bitcoin stories did really well. Um, mm -hmm. the story today is our biggest story on the site. And mm -hmm. like I said, all the traffic is coming in from all over the world and I'm getting emails, a lot of emails from readers mm -hmm. who want to know more. That's cool. That's really important. Well, let me take a break really quick and thank our sponsors because obviously we wouldn't be here without our sponsors' uh, generous support of the Bitcoin community and the Bitcoin show and Only One TV. So we want to thank first BitPay. Um, they call it BitPay. It's actually bit-pay.com. Bit-pay.com. BitPay is a really cool um, system for merchant processing. It's basically kind of like your PayPal checkout or uh, Google checkout. It's like a checkout service. It also includes its shopping cart integration if you have an existing shopping cart on your website. Or if you don't, you just have a plain old website or blog or whatever. You, you can have a blog where you sell t-shirts or coffee mugs, whatever you want. And they actually have a, a basic, like a bare bones shopping cart that's uh, option that's built in too. And what it does is you literally just embed this code, a code for each item, and uh, it handles the whole entire shopping cart and the whole checkout. The checkout only accepts Bitcoin. So you can price things in US dollars or Bitcoin and it automatically handles the whole thing. It gives the, the person who's the, the uh, customer a unique Bitcoin address to, and tells them the amount to send it to. And it handles the whole thing for you. It's really, really cool. And we actually are using it for the Bitcoin conference. So if you go to bitcoinconference.com and you click register now, you'll see those buttons and QR code are coming from bit-pay.com. It's so clever. They were actually guests on the show a while back. And um, it's just ingenious. I think it's a real, real innovative way to add Bitcoin. And the other thing is that the merchant who puts this on their site, they get paid in US dollars if they prefer, or Bitcoin either way. So um, it's really slick. You can just accept Bitcoin and you uh -huh. get paid in dollars and you're done. It's, just, <laughs> it's a no-brainer. So we love bit-pay.com. Bit and Mt. Gox, of course, everybody knows, mtgox.com. They have the, um, you know, they're the oldest, largest Bitcoin uh, exchange site. So you can buy and sell Bitcoin without leaving your, the comfort of your home. They have the vast majority market share, so everybody's very familiar with Mt. Gox. They've had, they've been hacked. They've had their challenges, but they're resilient. They could have run off with the coins like other sites have in the past, and uh, they didn't. They've they've come back. They have been guests on the show, and they've shown their face and their name, and we know you know where their address, where they live, and all that. Um, so they're here to stay. They have their back with uh, better security, and uh, we definitely appreciate their support. Uh, and Trade Hill, obviously, <laughs> the uh, the second largest exchange online where you can buy and sell bitcoins again with you know just by um, many many ways to get money in and out of it, uh, bank wire transfer whatever, lots of different options. You can buy and sell bitcoins online at TradeHill.com, and you can also uh, they accept euro, so they have. I mean, um, all the sites, well, I shouldn't say all of them, but if you can wire money, you can always have it translate or transferred, changed into, into U.S. dollars. If you send euros, you can have it changed into U.S. dollars. But Trade Hill uniquely has its own market in euros, so you can send euros without changing them into U.S. dollars, and they have an actual euro market, which is actually beneficial because you save a lot of money on transferring it in the fees and transferring it into dollars and then back into euros. So we thank TradeHill.com as well. And finally, usgoldcoins.com, which is 1-800-HOT-COIN. US Gold Coins is um, Andy Gauss's business. He's uh, the host of uh, The Real World of Money here on Only One TV. And this is um, not Bitcoin. This is if you want to diversify your investments. 
if you want to invest in something more traditional or you know uh, spread your investment out and not keep all your eggs in one basket if you want to buy rare US gold or silver coins as otherwise known as numismatic gold and silver coins this is your guy he's an expert and I can totally vouch for his integrity we've known him for a long time we started out as fans of his show he's like our money guru he's a monetary expert and um, then we became customers of his and um, now uh, he's actually a sponsor and hosting he's actually moved his radio show over to only one TV so um, we thank US gold coins if you want to buy if even if you just have questions about it just he's very accessible if you're in the US it's so easy just call 1-800 hot coin otherwise his website is US gold coins with an s dot com and we thank Andy Gauss at US gold coins for, for uh, his support so what else <laughs> What else is going on? Is there um, what do you what do you think is the the next phase after we get through? I mean, do you think we're going to solve the security problems? Do you um, see that happening? This is your prediction, your, your crystal ball. Uh, I hesitate to make that <laughs> call definitively. Um, I could see it happening. I think it's it's uh, it's kind of a test of this idea of like a decentralized pure animal market capitalism <laughs> um, so I think if there is a demand for secure exchanges that are accountable and there's no uh, um, and there's a way to do that without running afoul of um, national laws mm -hmm. then uh, I could see it happening yeah. for sure and what about liquidity as uh, the second big challenge do you see that being solved some in a, in a new innovative way or some other way or how how do you see that playing out any any thoughts well, on well the there's people mining bitcoin still so the total number of bitcoins is increasing so there's naturally mm -hmm. uh, that'll naturally add more liquidity um mm -hmm. i mean i i don't know, i, I well, feel like more bitcoins feel, but I mean, what about liquidity in the sense of if I have bitcoins and I want cash, or if I have cash and I want bitcoins? Oh, I, see. I mean, I can um, go to Mezzi Grill, but uh, well, not this week. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, it seems pretty liquid. If you have bitcoins, you can easily unload them. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of how much you'll get for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think you know, it's uh, if it survives this um, the security. Uh, obstacle, then mm -hmm. I think liquidity will come naturally. Yeah, cool, cool. And have you any theories of, on what could solve the problem of um, currency risk? Which you know, as I was saying, is like if a, if a restaurant, for example, they they operate on razor thin margins, you know, and they can't take the risk of the currency losing ten percent of its value in a day or two. So that problem of um, if I need eight dollars and ninety-five cents worth, I need eight dollars and ninety-five cents worth. Like you know, if they accept Bitcoin and it's just Bitcoin, then they don't know. They need the cash the very next day, and it's dropped ten percent. They're out of luck. So right. Um, well, I think I could see this uh, being solved as well um, because if the first issues are solved, then Bitcoin will be more stable, um, and also you'll have some. I mean, like oil is another volatile commodity, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, companies solve that problem with der futures contracts. Mm -hmm. So um, I could see derivatives coming into play here. And so, then merchants, there are lots of advantages to using Bitcoin, so there's an incentive to do it. I mm -hmm. mean, right now it's just kind of a novelty, but there are, you can avoid fees, you can mm -hmm. set up easy ways to pay internationally online. Um, so, so basically, you, you kind of think that this will solve itself as it becomes more secure and more adopted yeah, and the value is just going to keep going up? Yeah, I guess I think the hive mind will solve all of this. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> I think also you, like as a journalist, seeing stories that are media driven, which Bitcoin is right now, um, people may lose interest. And if that happens, then I think mm -hmm. then the, the great experiment is over. <laughs> Yeah, I can go either way. If people get bored of it. Yeah, it has to be. And, but so far, it's been not boring at all. So. Not boring. Yeah, I mean, do you think people have, I mean, do you think the Bitcoin community is, is losing interest in it be, um, because of these 
problems? No, I don't think that's happened yet. I'm mm -hmm. I'm saying this may be the biggest threat to Bitcoin is mm -hmm. lo losing its novelty and losing its interest. Mm -hmm. Because of the security issues? Or uh, no, just because people are fickle and they're... Mm -hmm. Tend to, to something it's else. Facebook. Oh no, it's Twitter. <laughs> now it's whatever. Yeah, it depends on how uh, emotionally or philosophically attached they are to this concept. Of a, right. Well, that was all the early adopters, but now a lot of the people driving the speculation are, I think, a little more, just a fickle. little less committed. Less yeah. committed. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And so um, the. Um, how at the at the office when you sit around and talk about Bitcoin, like what's the reaction of your coworkers and other writers? Do they what do they think of Bitcoin? They find it intriguing. I mean, mm -hmm. I went to buy Bitcoin and I was like, all right, who wants Bitcoin? My editor's like, I'll take one. What is it again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was something for lunch. <laughs> yeah, so their understanding is very shallow. Mm -hmm. they, they they think it's interesting and they have some uh, vague idea of its significance. No, they understand clearly that they lost it because it was on mybitcoin.com. Right? Uh, yes, the three people who bought in do yeah. understand this. Yeah. Wow. So, all right. Well, um, what would you like to leave the uh, Bitcoin community with? Is there any thought? Uh, follow me on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, definitely on Twitter. What are, um, you, what's your, what are you on Twitter? ADR Jeffries. ADR Jeffries. So, mm -hmm. at ADR Jeffries. Okay. Right. And, and at BetaBeat. Um, at BetaBeat as well, mm -hmm. and BetaBeat.com, B-E-T-A-B-E-A-T.com. -E 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 right. I'll be blogging about Bitcoin for the foreseeable future. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, really fun. and thank you for um, we chat being all the time. such a great source. Chat, yeah, yeah, I think I, yeah. what was the word I used for you the other day? Indispensable. For me? me? Oh, thank you. <laughs> you are too. Well, we, we, we share we share tips and stuff all the time, okay. right? Yeah, so yeah. Keep, keep, keep together. For All right. Sure. Well, thanks for joining us, and um, thanks we'll for see having you guys me. tomorrow, same time, 2 p.m. Eastern. Thanks.